Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of the Go On webinar series. My name is Elise Heister. I'm a Go On Secretariat and a Canals Fellow at um, NOAA's Ocean Acidification Program. And I'm going to be introducing our speakers and moderating today. So this webinar series is sponsored by four main organizations. First is Go On, the Global Ocean Acidification Observing Network. Second, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And third, the IAEA, o OAICC, the International Atomic Energy Agency, Ocean Acidification International Coordination Center. And finally, the IOC UNESCO, the Intergovernmental Ocean Commission of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. For those of you who are new to Go On, welcome. This is a, collabor a collaborative international network of over 900 members from 105 countries designed to detect and understand the drivers of ocean acidification and the resulting impact on marine ecosystems. During the presentation, all, participant, all participants are in listen-only mode. You are welcome to type any of your questions into the question box which can be found at the bottom of the control panel on the right side of your screen. We'll be monitoring incoming questions and we'll pose them to our speakers during the question and answer section of this webinar, which we'll, we'll, we'll begin immediately after the last presentation. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, so today um, we're gonna hear from three of the Go On MCDR Working Group Steering Committee members. Dr. Kalina Grab, Dr. Libby Jewett, and Dr. Helen Finley. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Kalina Grab. So Dr. Kalina Grab was the, was the 2023 Canals International Policy Fellow within NOAA's Ocean Acidification Program. And she's now a research associate in the Marine Policy Center at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, or HUI, where she also previously completed her PhD. During Kalina's time at OAP, she also served as a Go On Secretariat and is still on the steering committee of both Go On's International Carbon Observing Network for Early Careers, also known as ICONIC, as well as the MCDR Working Group. And with that, I'll let Kalina go ahead. Awesome, thank you, Elise, and thank you to the Go On Secretariat for hosting this webinar. Um, we are very thrilled today to talk to all of you. And um, first, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of what the run of show looks like today. So you can go to the next slide, Elise. So we are representing the MCDR Working Group Steering Committee. And right now, the Steering Committee members consist of Helen Finley, Dick Feely, Libby Jewett, Sam DuPont, Gabby Kitch, and myself. And our goal here today is to um, give you all an overview of MCDR, as well as um, the environmental impacts, and then we want to share some results with you for a go on survey that we put out recently, which some of you may have participated in that asks you about your current MCDR activities. And after this, we want to enter an interactive portion. And this is where we really are going to ask you um, many different questions about the working group. And we will also invite you to um, engage with us here as well as fill out a form that I'll put in the chat here um, where you can express interest to be a part of this working group. So our goal here is to really bring in the broader community and we want to hear from you and we want your participation in this webinar as well as beyond. So with that, we'll start, I'll start with just the general overview of MCDR, which uh, many of you I'm sure have heard before. So the scientists have spoken, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or IPCC AR6 report has stated that in addition to a strict 
emissions reductions of carbon dioxide, we also need to remove more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in order to reach our climate goals. So I'm sure many of you have seen some version of this figure here, which shows the gigatons of carbon per year on the y-axis across years on the x-axis. And in the blue, you can see the remaining emissions. And if we stay at the current policy levels, these uh, and also including co um, conventional mitigation techniques, is going to be very difficult. And now IPCC is suggesting not possible to reach net zero. So the green portion you can see here is the negative emissions, which um, needs to grow so that we can hit these climate goals. And so that's why many people are turning to researching these different techniques currently. And next slide. So there are many different mechanisms which carbon dioxide can, could be removed from the atmosphere. And there are also different reservoirs that it can be stored in, including land sinks and soil sinks. And what we are focusing on here today is the ocean sink. And the ocean naturally absorbs around one third of the carbon dioxide emissions that are emitted. And it also has a potential to supply about half of the amount that land-based, or e equal amounts that the land-based methods remove, um, equating to over half of what we need in order to um, meet our climate goals. And this also, the ocean overall has the potential to remove 17 times more carbon dioxide than the land and soil combined. So you can go to the next, uh, click the next one. So here you can see that in the future, there are predictions that there will be additional new CDR sinks and um, the ocean can play a large role in this. You can go to the next slide. So within marine carbon dioxide removal techniques or MCDR, there are many different types that we can talk about. So um, ones that are more restoration based can fall under blue coastal blue carbon, whereas there are also different techniques that enhance the surface carbon pumps, such as ocean alkalinity enhancement and biotic cultivation and sequestration. And then there's also the more engine engineered approaches, which um, remove CO2 through different techniques, such as electrochemical CO2 stripping. So you can go to the next slide, please. And on the left here, you can see um, multi uh, macroalgal cultivation and ocean fertilization. And these methods increase biomass production within the surface ocean to draw down additional CO2. And then that biomass would then have to be removed from the surface ocean and sunk to the deep ocean or um, stored beneath the seabed, which you can see in the figures on the left. On the top right, there's ocean alkalinity enhancement, which can increase the basicness of water to absorb more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And this can be done through a number of different methods by either adding more basic materials to the ocean or using electrochemical approaches as well, which would strip carbon dioxide off of the water molecules either through chemistry or membranes. And on the bottom right, we see direct ocean capture, which also can lean on these electrochemical approaches to strip carbon dioxide directly from the water. And uh, then a more CO2 rich byproduct could be used in multiple different ways. So with that, that's just a brief overview of different MCDR techniques. And as many of you are aware of, a lot of these are still in the or all of these are still in the research phases in order to understand how effective they are for removing carbon dioxide, as well as the um, impacts on the environment and how they can impact different stressors, such as ocean acidification, which is the tie that we're really focusing on today. So with that, I'll turn it over to Libby. And Libby is a marine ecologist and planner of the offshore wind team in the NOAA Northeast Fisheries Science Center. She previously was the director of NOAA Ocean Acidification Program, and she was critical in establishing the CDR lead position. And she is also a member of the MCDR Working Group Steering Committee. So Libby, take it away. All right, so at least we can go to the next slide. Um, 
Thank you so much, Kalina. Um, as Kalina noted, I spent the last decade building the uh, OA research portfolio in the US, but now I'm working for the fisheries division of NOAA and thinking about how the various uh, marine CDR approaches might affect living marine resources like fisheries and protected species. Much of what we do know or expect to happen is marine CDR is tested and or operationalized in marine ecosystems is actually based on the body of research developed by OA researchers over the past decade, at least that's my feeling, um, which, had, which and that research has focused on the intersection of changing carbonate chemistry and biology. Uh, we anticipate that in some cases, marine CDR will actually ameliorate OA conditions, although this will be counteracted um, as the oceans continue to absorb more carbon dioxide. So as you have already heard, it's the intersection of marine CDR and ocean acidification, which concerns us in, in this working group of Go On. And I think we have a lot to offer and I'm looking forward to the conversation. So this table here comes from a recently released um, NOAA carbon dioxide removal strategy. Um, and it shows how the different marine CDR approaches from ocean alkalinity enhancement to ecosystem recovery, if you look on the left-hand side down the, down the list, might affect the marine ecosystem through intermediary chemical or mechanical changes, everything from eutrophication to vessel traffic. So enhanced OA is also a potential issue, especially for the upwelling, downwelling, algal sinking, and perhaps also ocean fertilization approaches. Something else we learned from ocean acidification research, which is super important, is that what you do and how you do it matters for the biology, even if the end game of sequestering carbon is the same. So for instance, in the early days of ocean acidification, there was this idea that it didn't really matter how you change the pH, you just needed to change the pH. And then quickly we realized that it actually did matter, um, that you couldn't just add HCl, that bubbling with CO2 was the more realistic and the and the the repercussions or the endpoints were going to be different depending on which uh, approach you took. So slide two. So next slide. <laughs> um, what we understand about how marine CDR approaches might affect marine life is based again as what I as I said before on what we have learned from ocean acidification research. So as you can see in this graphic on the right, which represents a 2016 meta-analysis um, conducted by Shallon Bush and others uh, in NOAA, in fact, um, of studies looking at the pH effects on marine species, you can see that many or most respond negatively. On the, that's on the right-hand side, uh, many of these being done uh, experimentally in the lab. Um, the species respond negatively to dropping pH caused by ocean acidification. However, some species respond positively. So the question is, will these responses reverse if we increase pH? Uh, maybe, but the biology is complicated. And again, what and how you do that chemical change matters. Um, another draft meta-analysis uh, led by Nina Bednarsik looking at extrapolated response curves of species based on OA experiments and field studies indicates that about 60% of the species that she was looking at, and she, again, she was looking at calcification responses, would have either neutral or positive responses to added alkalinity and higher pH. So next slide. Uh, some new and early studies, so we can go to the next slide, okay. Some new and early studies um, are showing mixed responses. So coccolith coccolithophores or tiny calcifying phytoplankton shown in the bottom right-hand corner, um, at least in some initial studies are showing a neutral response um, to added alkalinity. While some crabs um, like uh, Carcinus, Carcinus minus um, have experienced some physiological stress. So calcification continues to be a process we will need to closely monitor in the case of marine CDR. However, there's new re research that's getting up and running around the world um, on other crab species, oysters, mussels, and of course, a range of phytoplankton. Um, most of the marine CDR research to date has focused on assessing the carbon sequestration benefits, which of course is the end game here, 
why we would do this at all. Um, but I wanted to emphasize that looking at that is not the same as assessing the environmental impacts. If biological effects are included, they have generally focused on lower trophic levels, namely phytoplankton. But needless to say, uh, we need to do many more studies, especially on how those perhaps lower trophic level responses are gonna percolate up into higher trophic level responses. Um, and so my last slide, so more best practices guides um, are needed. And this, again, I feel like is something that the OA community has really offered here. Um, so a recent guide uh, was published in 2023, looking at um, research around ocean alkalinity enhancement, which actually included guides around looking at the environmental impact, which is fantastic. Um, I, I think we need more guides and guides that are focused on the other myriad of approaches that, um, that Kalina was just uh, describing. So I think the OA community has a lot to, of experience to offer, which we might build into this go on white paper. So um, this is obviously a very quick, a quick overview of in, uh, environmental responses, but I, I hope we, we will be expanding that knowledge um, soon. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Hen Helen Finley, um, with whom I've been working with for many, many years um, through our ocean acidification community. Helen is a biological oceanographer at Plymouth Marine Lab in the UK. She's chair of the Marine CDR Working Group, coordinates the Northeast Atlantic Hub of, of the Global OA Observing Network, and sits on the Executive Council of GOON. She's been researching OA and climate change impacts on marine organisms for over 15 years and is now applying this knowledge to marine CDR. So over to you. Thank you, Libby, and thanks, Kalina, for setting the scene. Um, so I'm going to just give you a brief kind of introduction to the working group, um, and then we can move on to a bit more of a discussion session. So just to highlight what Libby's already said really here is that MCDR research is being built on a foundation of knowledge, which we feel is generated by large part by the oceanification community and certainly the carbon cycle community. Um, and that support to the MCDR um, development is, is really needed to be continued um, and we need to get engaged and continue to be engaged in that discussion so that we move forward um, in developing best practices and, and allowing these processes and technologies to be, do, to be developed so that they actually work and work in the ways that are beneficial to um, society and the ocean ecosystems at large. So these are just some of the areas that we think um, and we, we hope to hear from you guys to add to this. Um, the MCDR is related to oceanification science. So things like technology development and efficacy testing, we have all this knowledge on carbonate chemistry and carbon cycling. Uh, the first goal of, of Go On, the Global Oceanification Observing Network, is to monitor oceanification. And by proxy, that means monitoring the carbonate chemistry parameters. Um, the third goal of Go On is to model and uh, predict future um, changes in the carbonate chemistry and, and ocean acidification. And again, there we have large capabilities within this community that actually feed into that ability. Monitoring, verification and reporting is something that's talked a lot about in MCDR and is going to be incredibly important in making sure that these things are doing what they say they do. Um, and again, that's where our observation network comes in, our knowledge comes in of the systems modeling capabilities and as Libby's just highlighted really this ability to understand the environmental impacts but also how we connect up the observations in chemistry but biological observations as well and, and that's something that I think the oceanification community has been thinking about for some time now. And then finally this environmental impacts. So as Libby's highlighted, does do these things alleviate oceanification or worsen them? What are the other environmental impacts? There's a lot of lessons we can learn from the oceanification uh, community, what we've been doing, how we manipulate the carbonate chemistry, what tools we have uh, from everything from mesocosms up to field experiments. So that kind of sets the scene. If we move to the next slide, please. Um, 
the go on decided on on the kind of the back of that and was that we should set up a working group for MCDR. I'm not going to read out all of these slides, but these slides will be available to everyone. So I just wanted to put these from our terms of reference for the MCDR working group. Um, and just highlighted there in the roles and purposes that GoOn's collective expertise can make a critical contribution to ensuring responsible, sustainable and accounting um, OCDR or MCDR research is conducted. And our group is was convened to engage, advise and offer guidance to the GoOn membership and the Executive Council. So we have three goals. That's to advise the Executive Council of GoOn on matters relating to GoOn's involvement in MCDR research activities and policy to facilitate and promote involvement of members in MCDR activities to ensure the appropriate inclusion of oceanification expertise in these activities. And the third goal would be to generate uh, MCDR informational products based on OA expertise within our network. So uh, I wouldn't, Colleen has already said who we are. So there's just a, another list. Um, I need to update Colleen's uh, association there because she's no longer with the NOAA Oceanification program. So apologies for that, Kalina, I never updated that one. Uh, next slide, please. So what have we done so far? Well, we were established um, just after our executive council in-person meeting uh, in Lima at the end of the high CO2 workshop um, conference in September, 2022. So through the winter of, of, sort of winter spring, 22, uh, 23, we were, really discussing what we wanted to do with the MCDR working group, uh, wrote our terms of reference um, to establish ideas and tasks. Uh, and then moving forward through to the summer of last year, we started to design uh, a survey, which we sent out to the Go On community, which I'll come on to. And that was closed and results were presented uh, in the autumn or fall of last year. And then since then, we've really been thinking about what we need to do for next steps. And, and part of that is this discussion really to engage more of the go on community um, and oceanification community more broadly to get a recruitment of we, we want more members, um, as we'll discuss um, of our work, working group. Um, and we'd also like help and assistance um, to really put out this this position paper and to get the community behind these activities and and get this um, engage this working group really more engaged um, in the wider activities of MCDR. Next slide, please. So uh, just a quick brief overview of our survey results. Um, again, so 70 7% of our respondents, so we had 109 people responded, were actually go on members, um, which is not surprising. We we purposely sent it out primarily to the go on membership list. Um, there are about a thousand members on the go on uh, in the go on community, so um, that's about uh, well 100 people is is a relatively small fraction, but it was it's a good a number for a survey, so we're pretty pleased with that. Um, but interestingly, there was. Uh, a fair number of people who weren't actually GoOn members. So we need to try and capture those people and find out um, who they are and if they want to join GoOn or if they have other expertise that we need to engage with. Um, most people were aware of MCDR. Again, that's not surprising as it's probably a survey that you would only respond to if you really knew what MCDR was. Um, I think that just was the way it was targeted. Um, but interestingly, 37% said they were already working on MCDR, 20% were planning to work on it soon, and most people, 22% further, said they would like to work on it if they aren't already. So of those people already working on MCDR, 26% were working on ocean alkalinity enhancement, um, next in line with seaweed cultivation, followed by ecosystem restoration, um, direct ocean capture, um, other activities, nutrient fertilization and deep sea addition, just 5% of people. The others were included things like um, developing principles and effective communication. There was some people from funding and policy side of things, education, uh, monitoring, verification and reporting, uh, blue carbon finance, um, advising local communities and looking at other techniques. Um, so respondents wanted from the working group um, more collaboration and networking, knowledge exchange, and perhaps some um, interactions between field and lab experiments. And they felt that a position paper would be a good outcome from the working group, uh, followed by a two-page high-level document. 
and also it would be really useful to get collaboration connections and and we'll like to hear from you guys to make sure that that feedback reflects what uh, people here also feel as well um, a lot of people wanted to be more involved at an international level in MCDR and again there was quite a high percentage of people interested in joining the working group which is fantastic and hopefully those people are here today to learn a bit more and, and hopefully fill out our forms and get involved. Um, so we had some other suggestions as well, more sort of open suggestions about broadening the group and again that's exactly what we want to do and why we're here. Um, ensuring the position reflects the go on membership. Um, and joining with other groups. So we really are interested to hear from you as a community, who's, which other groups we should be connecting with. Uh, we've heard from some people already. Um, and so we, we wanna hear from that, from that angle as well. Um, next slide, please. So I, I think uh, that's pretty much me done. So I'll pass back to Kalina in a minute, other than just to say that we, our, our plans for, for future work really is all about developing these discussions and tasks with a wider community. So we really invite you to join our working group. We're gonna talk about the position paper in a discussion that's coming up um, next. <laughs> and um, we really wanna hear back from you as well on what else you'd like to get out of this working group. So we have our steering committee, but we would like additional members um, and we want people to feel like they can come forward and lead particular tasks um, and particularly with this position paper what we're hoping is that people will sign up to either writing specific bits or kind of having a, a, a joint participation in specific parts of the paper that they feel they can contribute to. So in that I'll hand back to Kalina to lead us through that discussion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Libby and Helen. And I also want to acknowledge that um, we see the questions in the question box, so we'll type answers to them as they pop up. Um, and again, we're going into open discussion. So um, just emphasize one of the questions that came up, uh, everyone that is a Go On member is welcome to join our working group. And um, it will focus on the intersection OA and MCDR. So um, even if you are not the... Oh, is my Zoom working? Wait. Okay, sorry. I just came up with a warning message that I was going to quit. Um, so I'll jump on quickly if it does. Um, but uh, you are welcome, more than welcome to join the working group even if you don't work on OA. And this is the premise of how we will be approaching it. So with that, um, I wanted to share a few resources that we have in the community. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, we recognize that there are so many community resources coming up, which is amazing. Um, and these are in no way biased towards, you know, uh, against ones that we are not including. Um, however, if you can see my screen, this is a um, MCDR field trials map that Ocean Visions has been working on collating and we lost you okay back. it did quit it's back yeah. sorry about that um so the MCDR field trials map from Ocean Visions is a great resource to see what is going on and um, people have submitted responses. So you, I would encourage you to zoom in on the map, see where you're located or areas that you're interested in, see what's going on. Um, take a look if yours is included, if you've submitted it and contribute as well. Um, another resource that we, and I think in the chat, um, Get those links sent to you as well so you can access them. Um, sorry, my Zoom is not cooperating right now. There keeps being pop up windows. So, other resources are the Ocean Visions Forum. This is another place where there are community discussions. Um, you can look at different projects and uh, different resources that Ocean Visions has created, as well as post anything that is going on, any events, information, community feedback, and um, that sort. 
And then there's also the Ocean Acidification Information Exchange, which um, really dovetails nicely with this working group since it is more related to ocean acidification. And within this, there's a team that is focused on carbon dioxide removal. So this operates similar to the Ocean Visions Forum, where uh, you can post something, see what other people are posting, and interact with the community in that way. So with those resources, just as some information, we want to now move in to asking a few questions of you all so we can understand where you are at um, coming from in, in the community. So I think the secretary was going to help us have the polls up here. Okay, so on your screen, you should see a series of five different questions. So we ask that you take just a few minutes and answer them all, and then we'll walk through them one by one and view them collectively so that we can see um, not, not names, but numbers wise, where our group stands. All right, I see some numbers coming in. We'll wait another minute or so so that more people can fill them out. And we can see in the Q&A um, that there are some comments as well. So we really appreciate you sharing your thoughts and encourage um, people to, to put in different questions as well. And at the end, we can use them um, for topics of discussion if we get to that point. All right, last chance to fill out your answers. Okay, um, we can go ahead and view the results. So the first question I'll read as we're viewing those. So I went ahead and shared the results. Can everyone see them? It's hard to tell. Are people viewing the results? I can't see it, Kalina. Okay, awesome. Um, so the first one is, if yes, on a scale of one to 10, what do you consider your expertise of MCDR? So it looks like we have quite a few. We have a, a little peak in the three to five range and quite a few skewing towards the higher end. So it looks like 25% um, are saying eight. So that's looks like we have a pretty well-informed community with some that are also here to learn more as well. Okay, so question two, do you currently work on MCDR? So it looks like majority of you in the room either work on it. So we have 37 percent that currently work on it, um, some planning too soon, and others that would like to. So it looks like that we have a community here that is looking to get involved actively in MCDR research or working on it. So question number three, if you do work on MCDR or are planning too soon, um, describe your research in the region where it is based. So we appreciate those that answered, and um, I don't I think I can view them right now, but we can, um, we'll definitely read through those afterwards. And then for other than your own research, do you know of MCDR research that is coming to your region? 
So it looks like a lot of you are working in 67% are working in regions where you know of other research coming as well, um, whereas the remainder, 33%, um, do not know of any others. So if you're aware of MCDR research in your area, what type of projects are occurring? So it looks like a lot of you are aware of field trials at 68%, um, and that is the highest ranking, which is awesome. It's great to hear that people are are um, hearing about field trials coming. Then modeling studies is next at just over half, or sorry, laboratory studies just over half, and then um, modeling studies and less so biological studies and even fewer social science studies. So thank you so much for participating in the poll. This gives us a good idea collectively of the um, the attendees here and the interest that is um, that you all express in MCDR. Okay, so now we're going to jump into the uh, a different type of interactive se section. So Libby and Helen talked about this position paper that we are thinking about writing from the working group. And we really want to invite those that are interested to contribute to this working group, to get involved. Um, and we want to gather together um, co-authors so that we can proceed forward with this. So uh, all that we have so far is a skeleton outline of the working group. So I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, thank you, perfect. So this is the skeleton outline of the working group. And what we're going to do is I have a Jamboard set up where um, in just a moment, we'll look at it and we'll open up uh, one slide for each of these questions to uh, collectively as a group, brainstorm ideas and throw ideas out there on the paper. So the ideas that we'll go through are one, why ocean acidification is important to consider in MCDR. And two, what is the role of go on in relation to MCDR? Three, what are some lessons learned from the OA community that can be helpful for MCDR? And four, crossovers between OA and MCDR measurements and communities. So I'll go ahead and share my screen with the Jamboard. And um, I'll put this link in the chat as well. And for those of you that are not too familiar with Jamboard, the way that it works. So. It's Kalina Frozen. Yeah, I think we lost her again. Minute. Well, we have the Jamboard link. I guess people could start. Yeah, so if people want to open up in. the Jamboard, we can see if people, if, if you know how to use Jamboard, then please feel free to get started. Um, the link's in the chat. If you're unfamiliar, basically you can um, click copy and paste a sticky note to add an idea. So you can click on the sidebar um, and just write down your ideas. Um, we've also put up that you can kind of copy and paste this diamond next to a sticky note if you like the idea rather than have to repeat it. Oh, we've got Kalina back. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. This is why we have such a dynamic team. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, apologies. I'm now on Zoom in the browser, so hopefully this works better. <laughs> I don't know what's going on today. But um, so, yeah, we have the Jamboard. Um, I think maybe some other people are sharing it. And I see many of you already putting sticky notes on, so that is wonderful. Did you, clean it? were we going to work on one question at a time, or should we just jump around and add things? Yeah, so we can first focus on the first question. So um, that's what we have displayed now, and I see people working on it. Um, I will give you just a few minutes, and then we can kind of briefly read through what we're observing 
on the Jamboard. And then we'll move to the next slide. So we'll do one section at a time. You should just highlight um, that this Jamboard we're going to make available for some time afterwards, after this seminar, um, webinar, and also we're going to share it with all the registered participants um, so that we can get feedback. But please make sure you do fill in the form um, for the working group so that we can capture your names um, and your contributions that way as well. Yeah, and remember, if you see that you like another person's idea, you can put a little diamond next to it to kind of emphasize that you agree that that is a good idea. And so some of the things I see popping up right now are, so why OA is important for CDR, many proposed methods um, will alter the carbonate chemistry. OA is also carbonate chemistry, so it's very related. Uh, MCDR will change the carbonate chemistry as well as OA. So al ocean alkalinity enhancement is the most advanced MCDR technique and also the most feasible. Understanding OA more fully is thus crucial. We need to make sure that ocean acidification isn't enhanced by MCDR. I see a lot of diamonds around techniques for measuring OA have applicability for MCDR MRB. And OA will affect the efficiency of MCDR using OAE. Carbonate buffering plays an essential role in MRV and MCDR, and OA is the root of OAE. All right, we'll give you just one more minute to fill out the remainder of this sheet before moving on to the next one. And Libby and Helen chime in if you have thoughts that you're observing as well. I'm just pleased to see that some of this ties up with what we were discussing. <laughs> so this is great. And we've we've seen um, Steve and Fred, your comments in the, in the Q and A, I think they're really good um, comments we can come back to hopefully towards the end. All right, so with that, I think we can go to the next slide in the Jamboard. Um, again, it's available later. So if your thoughts are, if you're really focusing in on that, go ahead and finish, but we're just gonna focus the attention onto the second question, which is what is the role of go on related in relation to MCDR? So how can go on contribute, help, support, benefit from the MCDR community and research? And we'll give you a few minutes to start populating. All right, so there's a few coming up. Remember, you can put some diamonds around if you really like an idea. Um, but what I'm seeing is to help link OA experts in specific regions to MCDR activities happening in their region. Go on members have a lot of data that will be crucial to assess baselines for MCDR. To create a more robust intersection between knowledge, expertise, and communities of practice to highlight the importance of ocean acidification and monitoring, verification and reporting of MCDR, the impacts and performance. Um, as a community, we make sure that the methods are scientifically approved by researchers and be sure of the side effects of the activity all over the globe. And to provide training to OA community to help them apply their knowledge and skills to the MCDR 
conversation. And go on, can get the word out about MCDR through the networks of members. Livy and Helen, any thoughts to add to this? I'm working on my stickies. Perfect. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I mean, to just recap on Go On's three main goals, I think all three of those have a, have a role to play and and they, they're coming up in this answer as well, which is good to hear. So the three goals of Go On were to observe, change and understand how that carbonate chemistry is changing. And that's vital for M MRV and understanding MCDR efficacy for modelling and forecasting. And, and we see that in again in the sort of MCDR uh, assessments, technology development, and then the third one, not in that order, <laughs> is the biological impact. So um, it's good to see kind of some of that coming through as well. Dispelling myths and falsehoods is definitely something that we need to advocate, I think. All right. It's wonderful to see all the diamonds as well. And we'll give you just one more minute and then we'll move on to question number three. And again, I'll put the form in the chat, um, not to overlook, bear you with so many things coming at you, but just if you're filling this out and you're like, yes, I want to keep working on this. Um, we're really going to rely on this form in order to get all of your names and information to get in touch with you and, and move forward as a working group. All right, so with that, we'll go to number three. So this one focuses on what are the lessons learned from the OA community related to MCDR? So again, we'll you see a few people are working ahead, which is awesome. And we'll give you a few minutes to start populating it. All right, looks like we have quite a few. I'll go ahead and read a few out. Um, so some lessons that have been learned. Shellfish industry allies are invaluable for public engagement and likely will hold true eventually for fish and um, decapod industry allies as well. So spatial and temporal variability are key. The creation of active communities who collaborate, whereas MCDR research is quite dispersed and fragmented. Uh, standardization of protocols. I see lots of diamonds around this one with best practices sharing online through symposiums. How to work together to effectively solve problems. 
Um, we are not sure if it will work, especially without achieving zero emissions by the fossil fuel industry. Uh, Multi-stressor experiments are needed for full picture and well integrated with modeling to be able to scale. There are needs for long-term multi-drivers and ecologically realistic experiments to, on impacts of MCDR on marine organisms. Um, measuring the carbonate system, um, how you change the chemistry matters for the biology and we need to figure out how this relates to MCDR. It's important to keep the policymakers engaged from the start. Uh, share data to facilitate metadata analysis, determining environmental, biological, and ecosystem impacts, EMRV, is currently undefined. Make it, make it as strong as MRV and include the protocol development. Never underestimate the importance of local and regional context and chemical and biological responses and still need better observing technology. So I know you all are still actively adding things and I may have missed a few, which is amazing. So I love seeing how many stickies and diamonds there are here. Yeah, it's a great full page, that one. Still coming. All right, it looks like the activity has slowed a little bit. Helen, Libby, any thoughts before going to the next one? No, great to see lots of um, notes coming up there. I think that's, I think we have a lot. To, it just shows we do have a lot to offer. And it seems, Kalina, that we could leave this open beyond the webinar, right? For a little bit so people mm -hmm. can keep adding. I think it, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, this link will be active. And, and we'll also send out a follow-up. The link and so you can continue to add information all right we'll go to the last um, section of the paper outline so this one we want to note what the crossovers between oa and mcdr measurements and communities are so again we'll give you a few minutes All right, 
again, wonderful seeing all of the comments. So I'll go ahead and read a few. Um, so some crossovers between OA and MCDR communities include observation networks, chemical, biological, offer a background situation. These stations followed these stations followed for many years should be used for MCDR trials. Um, we need, we both need high quality ocean carbon measurements, especially if we are going to detect drawdown. And both OA and MCDR revolves around carbonate chemistry. So having standard protocols and measurements are useful. Biological community composition, um, carbonate chemistry parameters and in situ local laws and regulations, uh, working with industries such as shellfish industry versus MCDR startups, baseline measurements of carbonate chemistry, observational and measurement techniques. Uh, increased MCDR will mean increased pressure on carbonate chemistry CRM supply, supporting decision makers to make environmentally better decisions, observation network, chemical and biological. Oh, I think that was over there. Um, Many of the same people will be involved in both. However, industry and private funding are new players in MCDR. And private industry is siphoning off government academic scientists. Shared efforts around ocean acidification literacy. Perhaps not a crossover, but both communities are heavily reliant on science and tech expertise and lack social science perspectives. And there are not enough trained people to go around. We need uh, 10 times the workforce, including social scientists, and inform non-scientists and students about MCDR, the impact of MCDR on geochemistry of the beaches. So, yeah, a lot about the community, um, social scientists, biology, observations. These are all really good thoughts. And again, we really appreciate you putting down your thoughts and, and adding little diamonds around to say that you like someone else's idea. Um, and as we've mentioned, we will keep this open. So um, this is the final section that we envisioned for the white paper. But again, we hope to move forward and include some of you that are interested on working on this. So these, this will be a resource that we can then build off of um, and see how it evolves with the, the input. So Helen, Libby, any thoughts about the what we've seen with the input on the white paper outline? Yeah, nothing further to add, really. Um, some really good points coming up. So some of which we hadn't maybe considered, so that's good. Um, yep, it's looking good. Awesome. So before we do a little bit more Q&A and discussion, I, there's one more slide that um, we wanted to field to you all. So, so if you go to the next slide, number five, you might need to reload your Jamboard if this isn't number five, it was number eight before. Um, but we want to know what kind of activities that you all would be interested in seeing come out of the working group in addition to a position paper. So again, the exercise that we just did focused on what uh, focused on the position paper that we had thought of, but we recognize that God is a really large community. You all come from all different types of places. So we really want this working group to um, serve what people are interested in and also for you all to get involved in and lead some of these activities if you're really passionate about them or excited. And you can also um, add a little sticky note as well if you'd like to put something that isn't on the list here that we didn't suggest. I guess we should just say that by joining the working group, it doesn't commit you to any like thing, specific workload. We appreciate that everyone is doing this on their own time. Um, we tend to, to meet as a steering group as much or as little as as we need to depending on what's coming up um, and then we would hope that other people would help us lead tasks uh, depending on their interests but it's it's as much about being part of a community and, and sharing information as it is about actually doing things so don't be put off by the fact that 
you maybe don't want to join because you think you'll be committed to something. Overall, I'd say it just looks like a lot of interest. So this is wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Short training programs, workshops, those are good. Policy briefs, educational well, and please, materials for them. Please note that uh, we're going to need help if we're going to do all these things. So uh, join, we're going to hope that all of you join the working group so that we so that we can do that, do these things. We don't have any staffing, in other words. <laughs> yeah. And again, here's the form to join. And this is the form where we will follow up via email so that we know who you are and that you're interested. I love all these new ideas. These are wonderful. All right, so we'll let you, again, you can access this Jamboard. Um, there are a few other questions in the back that we can get to if we want, but I really wanted to spend time to address some of the questions and comments in the Q&A that we've reserve, received. And also um, this will be a general Q&A session. So if you have more questions, please put them in the Q&A box and, or you also can raise your hand and unmute if you would like to speak. Um, and so we got a comment earlier from Steve, which um, touched on the biological impacts related to OA. I actually can't see the comment anymore, but Steve, I don't know if you wanted to elaborate or if you want one of us to uh, just talk more about the comment that you put in. I'm happy to jump in if oh, that would help. Uh Thank you. Oh, you're you just on. me. Yeah, you just unmuted me. Thank you. I was hiding in the shadows. Uh, no, no, just, just, just a word of caution, really, around extrapolating from um, the ocean acidification data uh, that predominantly shows negative effects with decreasing pH. Um, we know many physiological processes don't necessarily follow a linear relationship with a stressor, temperature being the classic example. So I think. I think we shouldn't assume that we can just extrapolate the other way. I think there's still an awful lot of work to be done in terms of running some of those studies and those experiments. So that was it, really. It gives us some information, but you're right. We definitely have to caveat that. Well, I would say it gives us information to where to look. So that there are obviously pH sensitive processes and pH sensitive taxa. Now what their specific response is going to be when you hike up the pH or the alkalinity, I think is still, there's much debate to be had about that. Yeah, and I think I see Frederick Gazzo's notes about the importance of sharing information, which I think that's a great idea too, because um, the OA International Coordination Center has their the Biblio database. You know, maybe there, that's something we can build on somehow. Um, yeah, no, I agree, uh, because it's going to be really important for this information to. Um, about environmental effects, especially be getting out because as people are contemplating research permits for MCDR, um, we need for them to have as much information as possible. So Frederick, I don't know if you wanted to say anything more about that. Can we, is he unmuted or? Uh, I can try, yes. Thank you, Libby. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. No, I think yes. We were discussing in the last days the uh, possibility to add this kind of data sets and and publications that will really be really great if we can receive like we do receive with the OICC new stream uh, an update. You know, like every week or every month of what has been done, and uh, that will help us a lot. I think.
Yeah, thank you. That is a great suggestion. Um, and we'll make sure it gets added to all of the other ideas that have come up as well. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions, thoughts? We also have a few more. We have, we have a few more discussion questions, um, if, if not, but we want to make sure that we have time to address any that are in the community, in the audience or topics that people want to discuss further. Okay, so one of the other questions that we had is actually loaded into the Jamboard on the next slide and is where is the Go On community go from here? So we could see today throughout um, these exercises, there's a lot of ideas of these overlaps between OA and MCDR. And so we're curious of uh, whether it's through this working group or if there's other ideas, if anyone has some thoughts or inputs that they wanna add to directions that the Go On community can take. In, in relation to MCDR. So you can go ahead and add things here. Also, you can raise your hand or unmute. Yeah, maybe everyone's just putting so many thoughts into the previous questions. We had so many good ideas come up. Just, uh, I was just gonna, to fill the void, <laughs> um, opine on uh, the worry, I think, and concern that people have in the OA community that we're going to be consumed by marine CDR. And uh, obviously a lot of the researchers are um, also working on marine CDR. So I think it will be important to continue as the go on community to focus on OA and what's happening with that. So it's a tough balance. <laughs> um, and, and obviously the, the topics are very interconnected. So um Anyway, that'll be something that uh, a challenge and a balance that we'll have to continue to deal with. Yeah, I see a few I, thoughts popping up here. So more webinars and outreach is there's never enough. Uh, be a point of contact between MCDR and experts from the OA community. And be a strong OA voice within the MCDR conversation. So these are all sound um, like being very, very present and very involved in this intersection um, and communicating openly about the interse intersection between MCDR and OA. And we also have a few more thoughts in the Q&A. So as you're, you can continue to add to this screen and add to the Q&A. I know it might be information overload, but this is wonderful information coming out of everyone. Um, so Meg, uh, you are welcome to unmute. Um, I'll start reading your uh, comment and your thought, but if you want to add to it, you're welcome to. So um, adding on to Frederick's idea of providing print and online resources is good, but the community could be more active and engage in person, Ask, hold Ask Me Anything sessions, uh, let them know that you're available and provide contact information, but be mindful of not crossing the line. And permitters are wary of the perception of being influenced by the community they're tasked with regulating. Nice. So thank Nicely you, Meg, said, so Selena. <laughs> by the time I found Your my words. button, you were done. <laughs> Perfect. Um, would you like to add anything, Meg? Uh, I, 
think I got it down there just in Washington state where I am. And there are a few um, pilot projects um, being proposed and are sort of in the public review period right now. Um, I don't know. I've seen parallels within the seaweed farming permitting community in our state as well. Uh, whenever kind of a new thing with a lot of momentum behind it shows up, uh, county level planners, for example, some state definitely tribal are confronted with a whole new slew of um, things to review and consider and sometimes approve or not. And it's piled on top of already very full inboxes. And um, I would say that one instance of success in the seaweed farming permitting sector in Washington state was when uh, King County actually provided resources to hire an external consultant to serve as an information resource for the King County planners who were reviewing seaweed farming permits. So they divorced themselves from that process because that would have been a conflict of interest, but they paid for a third party consultant to serve as that expert. Um, and that really helped. So I think it would take some finesse as well within the scientific community, because of course, many scientists are involved in the projects that are being um, reviewed, but there should be some way to sort of create a buffer and have a third party expert scientist sort of resource board available for permitters to ask questions. Yeah, I think that's a really good perspective. And um, thank you for sharing that. I think it's really important for all of us to learn from different examples, both within the MCDR community and, and outside of the MCDR community on, on you know, ways to proceed, ways to interact with community members, perimeters, regulations. And, and I think that also goes back to what I'm seeing here. You know, where the Go On community is also can also offer a lot to the MCDR community. Um, so I see one more comment in the Q&A, Odile. So the private sector is also pushing the field of MCDR research forward and leading field trials. I think we should also address how to collaborate and coexist with the private sector leading R&D and MCDR. So Odile, you're welcome to chime in if you'd like. Hi. Uh, yeah, I think uh, for me, it's kind of it's kind of new to me to see that the the private sector is highly active in in the ARD of this marine CDR. And I wonder how how like well, as in the academia, we share our data, we we share our results. How we gonna like inform them and like collaborate with them with their result and uh, yeah. Just wondering how to address this question, which I think it's concerning that but no, it's not concerning. I think they are pushing the field forward and it's a good thing, but maybe with other interests than us. Yeah, I think that's a really good recognition um, thing to recognize in this field, especially how the interdisciplinary nature of it and across sectors. And um, I think that that is something that we can also keep in mind here is you know what the the what we have to offer as the go on community in terms of information from an OA perspective and sharing information engaging openly um, in order to to provide that information so I think that's good to keep in mind that we're not only talking about within academic sectors in the MCDR field and, and we also welcome, you know, as we move forward, if there are ideas on how to do that better and how to um, better serve that, uh, that those are things that the working group can, can engage on. Yeah, I know um, from the perspective of uh, publicly funded projects that involve the private sector, that um, there are requirements that data be shared publicly. And so I think hopefully we're trying to set an example, at least on that side to, and I, I feel like everyone, you know, it, they're good actors all the way around. 
um, people are trying to do the right thing. So I think we, you know, set an, ex an example and making sure that we go back and ask for the data and, and look at it and, you know, that'll be important. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to figure out how it's all going to work, but <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, Raquel has a very important question that we've talked about as part of the steering committee. Um, so it's a, Raquel says there is an uneven level of MCDR initiatives and researchers between the global north and the global south. How could the working group address this issue as GoOn has several regional networks? It would be interesting to have at least one member from each network as a representative in the working group. Yes, we've def we have definitely discussed that, and that's largely why we want to take this approach of an open webinar to try and invite all go on members from around the world and across all of the hubs to join this working group. And we recognize that the steering committee has a limited representation and we do not come from very diverse regions geographically. And we would like to make move that forward by recruiting some of you to be involved in this as well. So um, if you are from one of the regions that is not currently uh, represented on the steering committee, please, we encourage you to join. Um, please fill out the form. And we also can work with the secretariat. I think that's a wonderful suggestion, Raquel, to actively recruit members from each region as well. So we hope, we really value that GoOn has that global perspective. We, we tried to push that a bit with the survey um, in the sense that initially when we sent it out, it was very much responded to by the US and European colleagues. And so we, we tried to make an effort to make sure that the regional hubs pushed it out through their own um, channels as well. But I think we can we can do much better. And, and like you like you've said, just getting some representation on the on the group would be fantastic. So. Kelly, if you want to add any comments to to that as well, please do. Yeah, no, I don't have any ad, uh, addition comment. It's just nice to hear that you already thought about it. And yeah, I think he, we need to enjoy that go on so uh, well-established group. So I think there will be a lot of people interesting, but maybe they don't feel a little bit... Uh, they don't feel uh, in a position to participate because they are not experts, because usually they probably will not be the expert in MCDR in Brazil, for example. So maybe they just need a push, you know, <laughs> because sometimes people don't feel very welcome to be part of something they, that they are not specialists. So I think uh, asking for the networks to suggest one representative of each one, I, I think would be nice, but it's nice to hear that you already thought about it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Raquel. And thank you so much for putting that in the comment as well. And we're lucky because we have such an amazing go on secretariat that could help us uh, communicate across all the hubs. So. I like that suggestion of, of making sure that all the hubs um, feel invited and know that we're really seeking their engagement. Um, I think we should and, also yeah. say we, we, we've got the early career hub network of Go On as well, and we, we definitely want to engage with them as well. I think there's a lot of uh, interaction and, and new PhD and early career people working on this topic uh, and that connection. So we are thinking about that as well. So I just wanted to make a comment too that um, part, although it may not be technically or end up falling within the purview of the working group per se, um, we've been thinking a lot it, uh, sort of amongst in these workshops that are happening around MCDR um, about making sure that countries that maybe to date haven't had an active MCDR, you know, research community have access to the broader community as 
potentially, you know, private industry might be coming in to do some research in um, your coastal waters. And so, you know, I, ho I hope this working group can really wrestle with that and make sure that we have the resources available. And I think, you know, you can only start at some point and try and move forward on that. But, um, you know, I think there are environmental justice aspects to this that we want to make sure are um, that we can, because we have this broad network, can enable that flow of information. I think that's really important um, because it actually, there's going to be a lot of countries where people, industry is going to go to because it's maybe easier to pass regulating and permitting permissions than perhaps some other the other nations in the global north. And I think actually Meg's maybe just commented a little bit on a similar sort of thing is that if we have the community engaged in the global south and in, in areas that perhaps uh, the oceanification network really can bring together, then we can hopefully enable those people to also have a say in the work that comes to them through industry trying to to go to those countries um, and they've got some leverage then maybe to actually go to their regulators and, and policy makers and say look we need to do this the right way so I hope I hope there's some feedback uh, and benefit on both sides to doing that yeah and I've been thank adding you. a few of this oh no, I, I was just thank you for the answers. It's really nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, and I've been adding a few of the sticky, this, a few of these discussions onto our sticky page so that we have those noted as well. And um, Federic also wanted to address the in the private sector. They will check whether tech a technique is feasible and efficient, but likely not check whether it has side effects on biology. So um, that's where really we must interact. And that goes back to, in my mind, of the point that Steve brought up at the beginning of this, this discussion, just how important it is to, to remember the biology, to remember that's not all linear and, and pay attention to the biological impacts. So I think that's a, a good dovetail between engagement with the private sector and the biological, the need for biological experiments. Frederick, do you, do you want to add anything? No, not really. That was exactly what I was thinking. The only, the only problem I can see is that how do we know what is going on with the private sector? This is always difficult. And uh, I don't know how Goa one could help on, on international level, but also for the to the hubs, the regional hubs, on trying to have an inventory of what what is going on with the private and the public sector, that both communities are aware of uh, what is happening. And uh, for the moment, this information is, is, is lacking, really. Yeah, and that's a little bit of what we were trying to get at with the survey, actually, is trying to understand and that our survey just went to the going community, but these other resources such as the MCDR map that Ocean Visions has created that we mentioned, I think these are trying to get at understanding what is happening where. And I think that a lot of people I've seen in the uh, MCDR community feel that it's hard to track because it's moving so fast and there are so many new players. Um, it's it's really changing week to week on on what is happening where. So maybe this is something that we can think of th as well throughout our global network on if we have a role that we can play there in some ways. And I also see that Fabrice uh, noted that we should include aquaculturists, which can help with upscaling field experiments for algae, for example. So Fabrice, if you want to add anything. Um, also note, as you're finding your unmute button, uh, that we only have a few minutes left in this webinar. So um, you are welcome to type uh, we'll probably address one more question in the Q&A before wrapping up, but this Jamboard will remain open so you can put thoughts on there and this will be a resource for the entire working group. Fabrice, do you want to 
Yeah. Okay. Um, well, no. The idea is that we just need to be able to upscale uh, field experiment, particularly when we are looking at impact and um, the experience that we do have here in France is that we used to work with people doing aquaculture, and this clearly helped to uh, investigate um, larger scale effect and to go out from the lab. And this is particularly true for uh, carbon sequestration, though algal culture, for example. So this is just a, a remark. This is something that works well and that is useful, I think. Awesome, thank you so much. Wow, so much wonderful discussion, information, questions and answers. Thank you so much to all of you for coming today and sharing your thoughts, being open to put your thoughts out there on paper and, and, um, and by voice as well. So we are just about at the end of this webinar. Um, again, if you haven't done so yet, please fill out this form in order to make sure that we have your name and your email um, so that we can follow up. Meg, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I'm question. sorry. Uh, you were trying to wrap up. Um, tomorrow uh, in Seattle, uh, I, myself, uh, Sarah Nawaz with American University and Cohen Bauer with um, Ocean Networks Canada, we are launching the Pacific Northwest um, MCDR node that is one of the five that the Ocean Carbon Biochemistry um, program is standing up. We're doing this with an in-person event and there are a few, uh, we have packed the agenda, but there are a few things that I will wave in front of the 60 or so people who attend um, to pay attention to. And I'm just wondering if, you know, these are not necessarily, these are not necessarily even all oceanographers, let alone go on members, but it sh would you like them to know about this opportunity to join the go on MCDR working group? Um, I forget sort of how you uh, defined sort of membership criteria for that. Um, I know that you don't have to be a member of Go On, but, uh, and we, yeah, we can talk about so, this offline <laughs> if you want. Yeah, yeah, well, we are, we are encouraging and would like everyone to be a member of Go On. And that means that you can join today. <laughs> yeah, um, the secretary can Yeah, it's not you. a very high bar. The cost is free. <laughs> yeah. 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 So really we, we want to welcome membership um, with the premise that the members understand that we are looking specifically at this intersection between OA and MCDR. So if they are interested in exploring that and they're interested in being a Go On member, then they can go ahead and sign up for Go On and fill out the interest form. So the, the cost is actually high and that the members will be working on things. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. I'll make that clear. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Meg. Yeah, and, and please share with your networks as well. Um, so with that, we've hit the end of this webinar. Thank you again. We will follow up with um, some links in writing as well as we will specifically follow up with those that fill out the form. So keep an eye out in your inboxes. Um, we are uh, likely to move forward um, and we probably won't have another meeting or uh, activate the engagement with the working interested working group members um, probably be another few weeks or month or so as we sift through all the information that everyone has provided and uh, get the word out to encourage people to keep filling out the form. So you look forward to hearing from us um, probably in a few weeks or so. Um, with that, I'll turn it back to the Secretariat. Thank you so much for attending and also thank you to the Go On Secretariat for helping uh, with all of the tech support and advertising of the webinar. And, and thanks to the, the um, working group as well. Thank you very much for attending. And we will now end this webinar. The recording will be available as soon as we have downloaded it. And please do fill in the form. And the Jamboard, as Kalina said, will stay up for a little while longer. So if you have any ideas and thoughts, I know I get my best ideas at 3 o'clock in the morning. Please feel free to fill in the Jamboard and also feel free to share it within your networks. We look forward to hearing from you and thank you all again. Thank you to our speakers and good evening.